I don't think we can get much more of a special day than we're having today for my mother. Uh, she's, uh, she's worked really long and hard all her life for, for uh, not only our own people, but for, for the outer community. She's made, a, she's made some great connections with the city of Nanaimo and made things work, uh, not only for us, but for the city of Nanaimo. Always the betterment. She's always looking at, uh, at making things better for everyone. So she's worked with children, she's worked with uh, city councilmen, she's worked with uh, elders in our nation and elders on the outside. So. It's so appropriate during our sesquicentennial that we should celebrate Ellen White's work and in uh, reconciliation far before the word was even known by most Canadians. I was wondering if you guys were here. We call him a Freelish baby because his mom's Cree and his dad's Pacific. It's very fitting. It's very fitting for the country of Canada to give Auntie the Order of Canada. In 2011, the province, she received the Order of BC. And she's, won, she's had numerous awards and recognitions throughout her life. So, but regardless of today, it's very fitting. And she's in the, her twilight years, and it's very fitting that today happened. It's well deserved. And um, I couldn't think of a, of a wonderful individual that received this year. Auntie's on that list and well deserved. And very honored to be here and be part of this process today for our Auntie. <laughs> Well, it's such a joy to be here to be a part of the recognition nationally of Auntie Ellen because of the work that she's done locally, the work that she's done in various parts of the country. Because now it brings to light in the rest of this country the importance of the understanding of the First Nations people and the importance of us investing in understanding and seeing each other uh, within this country. And I'm so pleased that the Order of Canada and the Governor General has taken it upon uh, himself as the current Governor General to elevate the understanding of the First Nations in this country. I think this is a great thing for Auntie Ellen. She is so deserving of this award, and it's time. It's time that she got it, and we're just all here to celebrate that day. I met some very beautiful Aboriginal people and I'm giving up because it's a very beautiful, special day. Just a while ago, she received the Order of British Columbia, and so this is just absolutely a crowning honor for my mother right now. So we're really very happy with it. The family's happy, and as you can tell today by the amount of people who are here, very, very people from uh, from from educators to to politicians to family friends, very close and they're all here today in order to honor my mother. I feel in a, like it's a great celebration and uh, Ellen has shown us a pathway that we can all for, follow to be in a good place. It's true. Auntie Ellen's been a champion of our peoples and bridging our worlds together, the Western world and the First Nations world. She's been a midwife since she was nine years old. She just, and all the cultural teachings, along with her Western knowledge, just a, she's just a godsend. We've been, we're very fortunate to have us in our world. And uh, Auntie Ellen, I love you. At the university as a result of, uh, of Ellen's teachings, as a, a, a result of Ellen's emphasis, the culture has come to the place where we work on a basis of love, uh, work on a basis of respect, and it's because of her that we're able to create that environment where each of us feels a part of something very special. It's what Auntie Ellen has done all her life and that's to try to bring both worlds together, to inform one of the other, trying to spread who the Aboriginal people are, trying to get Canadians to understand. It's just been a wonderful life she's had. She's done so much. Yeah. 
in her work, in her work, it, it's always been a very, a very strong, strong impact, not only on myself, but on my sisters and uh, for the community. I think uh, she's always led with education. She's very strong for education, and that was absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and also working, working as a politician with my father, they worked very well together and able to, uh, to be able to create, uh, create things for, for the betterment of our community and uh, most certainly create uh, things that are betterment for, for the outside community. And people remember her. They remember her very vividly from when they were young children, like they were about uh, eight or nine years old, when she used to visit them in school. So it's, uh, my, my recollection of my mother is that she never stopped working. And uh, true, true to my word is that my mother never stopped working from Vancouver Island University until she was 83. That was her retirement year, so I think that says a lot for us that uh, we've got a ways to go before we can retire. So. Well, if we could all look at life through Ellen's eyes and come at it with the love in our hearts, we would all be better off. Auntie Ellen was always a matriarch and full of someone you disrespected. When, when I was, I remember being a child, just Auntie Ellen, you just listen, you respect it, and, you, and she always had time, love, and lessons for you. And it's something you just absorbed, and she was always firm, but very patient, and uh, very full of just time for you. She just had time for you, and her, she was close to my late grandparents, and just very fortunate. And later in life, I went through a rocky patch in life about some, I went through a rough phase, and Auntie was someone I leaned on in my 20s. And she was very inspirational when made me switch careers and go to university. Because Auntie always said, son, you can do this. So because Auntie Ellen, uh, and she was the elder in residence at VIU, Mel Spina back in the day, and changed my life around. And when I got those, a post-secondary degree, and Auntie Ellen was there for that process and encouraging, full of love and support. And I owe the world. She's just a blessing. How I got acquainted with Ellen's past was uh, through Geraldine Manson. And Geraldine would tell me things about her, and so I got very, very curious about Ellen. And I started to do research, and the more I looked, the more I found, and the more I found, the more I realized her impact on both our worlds. And she's just been an icon for both of us. Testing, testing, testing. Welcome everybody. Um, thank you for coming out today. If I could ask you all to please rise for the entrance of the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Elder Mason. Would everybody please be seated? I would now like to ask Her Honor to say a few words. Well, good afternoon. Almost like coming home, so many familiar faces here today. <laughs> Mrs. Ellen White, I'm going to try this. You'll help me. Palasalot, close, thank you. Mr. Doug White and Mrs. Joyce White, Mr. Doug White and Mrs. Anissa White, Ms. Carol White, 
Mr. Gordon and Mrs. Leona Atkinson, Mr. Jan and Mrs. Linda Wedholm, Miss Vicki White, Elder Geraldine Manson, RCMP Honored Guard, many proud family and members and friends. What an honor it is to be here on the traditional territory of the Sonomax First Nation for this extraordinary celebration. The motto of the Order of Canada is Desiderantes Melorum Patriam. They desire a better country. I cannot think of a more appropriate motto to add to the many distinctions already earned by Ellen White. You indeed desired and worked your whole life to achieve that better country. And you leave behind many testaments to the lifelong commitment to improving the lives for all of us. There's no need to list Ellen's accomplishments to those of you gathered here today. Many of you have lived with these experiences. But I bet perhaps if we asked Ellen, maybe if we asked her to point out her most uh, momentous accomplishments, I bet she would point to her family. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, and uh, I've had the privilege of meeting some of them, and you certainly, they are a wonderful accomplishment. Personally, I've had the honor of experiencing the leg legacy of your work when taking part in ceremonies at Vancouver Island University, formerly Manalspina College, for it is there that the wealth of traditional knowledge was recognized and afforded appropriate acknowledgement equal to the printed information. The legacy that you have left us, Ellen, goes far beyond your written words and your dictionaries of Halkmium language. The legacy is one of the bridges you have built based on a strong foundation of love. You are a pioneer and an engineer, for through your love you have forged a pathway that all of us may follow, a pathway to healthy, inclusive communities for all. And as we deal with the growing threats of dramatic climatic changes and world politics, we will need the combined efforts of all Canadians to lead the way to a peaceful future for all our grandchildren. We will need to follow the pathway laid out for us by you, Kualatsuluwat, didn't quite get it that time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for seven decades of dedicated leadership. And thank you for leaving us this pathway of love for all of us to follow. Heichka. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll now read the medal citation um, prepared by the Governor General's office. Ellen White has worked for more than seven decades to celebrate the culture of her people. At a young age, she campaigned to be, to have electricity to her reserve and establish programs to better prepare Aboriginal children for the public school system. Later, as an elder, she wrote several books on the Coast Salish beliefs and practices and created one of the first dictionaries of the whole community language. She was able to build bridges between the Aboriginal people and the larger community, notably the long, as a longtime elder in residence at the Native Studies Program at Vancouver Island University. Your Honor, I present Ellen White. I'd now like to call on Ellen's grandson, Doug White, to say a few words.
Asiam Nesiaya, ain't the pet colossal tintanis the name of Aitna Squalo and Connas I Haitsepka, Haitsepka Siam Estimo. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is such a wonderful honor to be with you all today on a day when grandmother's being honored in the highest way in, in the country. She's asked for me to share a few words, and I've thought about what to talk about. And I think building on the themes of the Lieutenant Governor's speech about her work in helping Canada become a better place. Uh, what it brings to mind for me is how Grandma started out in the education system uh, that exists in this country. Uh, she was not allowed to go to the residential school, thankfully, on Cooper Island. And when that became clear, her and a number of her cousins were told by their grandmother, if you can't go to their school, you will go to my school. And she was raised up in the teachings, the Snowiath, all of the sacred teachings of our people with her cousins. And with that remarkable uh, moment in history, she was able to, and her cousins were able to, uh, bring into themselves the teachings of all of the elders of the Coast Salish world at that time, to use it in, for the betterment and in service of all of our peoples. I remember another story that comes to mind at the beginning this is a very historic moment in Canada when Canada began its process of really beginning to look into what are Aboriginal rights, what are treaty rights. And this is in the White and Bob litigation when Grandma's late husband, Chief Doug White, was the chief and his cousin Clifford White and David Bob had been out hunting deer out of season under the Provincial Game Act and had been charged. In terms of the advocacy that was required to bring our people together to support that litigation and appeal all the way up to the Supreme Court of Canada in the early 1960s. It required our communities to stand together in new ways that they hadn't before. It required grandma uh, to function as a translator of some kind for my, gra my late grandfather and for Wilson Bob from Snanawis when they were going to speak into the lawn houses around the Coast Salish world to go and seek support, Grandma was there with them to be their voice, to speak on their behalf, to bring together what became a, an incredibly historic moment in Canadian history. She's always said to me, as I've been growing up, you always go out and you seek and you look for expertise, you look for knowledge, you show respect to people that have suffered long and hard to gather up knowledge and experience and you ask for them to share with you what they know. You must always reach and seek to have the knowledge of our people in one hand and the knowledge from the West in the other and you must have them in balance if you're going to be a full person in this part of the world now, in the Coast Salish world, in what is now Canada, that our peoples need to hold both bodies of knowledge in equal respect and to use them together in powerful ways uh, for the betterment of the country. She has been in every part of the education system from, uh, from kindergarten up into universities and in those spaces she sat with as an elder of Anchorage University's First Nation Studies program. She sat with Canadians from across the country, people from other parts of the world and spent a, a major part of her time and her professional career and effort talking about and sharing with people uh, the stories about who Aboriginal peoples are. This is one of the most important projects of our, of our country right now in the, in the shadow of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, it was very much uh, a manifestation of that same idea Grandma has embraced throughout her life, which is that we must find ways for Canadians to know about who the Indigenous peoples of this country are in a real way. We must uh, write these stories down. She took very long, complex stories, some of which take multiple sessions, multiple days to tell, and condensed them into a form that could be a first step for Canadians to be able to reach into the stories, the worldview, the way of life, the Snowiath, the teachings of, of, that she received from her ancestors to become, and why did she do that? Because she said, we must let them know who we are. If we're going to be able to have a proper relationship with other people in the world, it must be grounded in real meaningful knowing and respect and recognition of each other. So through her books and through her education and career in edu the education system, 
She's always sought to fulfill those original teachings that she received about finding balance, finding respect and recognition, and, uh, and it's been a, an absolutely remarkable contribution. No matter where I've gone in Canada in my own work, it could be in some far-flung part of the country, when people hear I'm from British Columbia, they ask me, oh, do you know Ellen White from Nanaimo? I'm like, yes, I know her, in fact. She's my grandmother. So she's been a trailblazer in so many different ways. She's done such important work that has made a, a real difference in the lives of people. And when people in those far-flung places talk to me about the impact she has made on them, I know that she has made a fundamental difference in helping them understand who they are as a human being in this world and what it means to be in relations with other people. That it's, she's touched people in a very important way. And I think that this recognition today, uh, on behalf of Grandma, she asked me to say thank you. Thank you to uh, the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you to the Government of Canada. And thank you to all of the guests that are here today uh, to bear witness to this remarkable moment of recognition for uh, her own life's work and the teachings that she has sought to embody every day of her life. So on behalf of Palasawat Grandma, uh, just extend her greatest thanks to, to all of you and to the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you very much. When I was first honored, how many years ago, and I said, what did I do? It's all I did was go out and teach the children and people. The people, yes, the older people who went to that first school, they were sent up north. Up north. And they were having a horrible time. And uh, when they came, came down, they wanted to know why I was fighting so hard not to send our children in the same way. Yes, so, so I said, I don't want my children, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nephew, nieces, or anybody to be like those ones that came down from north. I thank everyone for being so loving and so appreciative of what I have said and what I do. The little children, they'll, they'll remember. Yeah. And I love this lady. Yeah, I like, I like the way she honors me. And, she, and, I, and I love her because she does a lot of work for everybody. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lady. Thank you. Thank you. Greatest Creator, as we have gathered here this afternoon, as you look upon each and every one of us, embrace the dear elder here today that we are honoring, Great Creator. Embrace her, fill her pockets full of energy, Great Creator, and those who have gathered and traveled afar, embrace them, clear in their path as they move from here to there, Great Creator. Embrace them as they travel the times I really appreciate all the kindness you have with these young, young ch children coming up and listen to great grandma and grandson can you come stand beside me I, I think one of the things right now is that she indicated uh, I think it was December 30th when the governor general's office uh, uh, talked to my mother and said that uh, Ellen we have uh, you've been selected to, to receive the medal for the Order of Canada and my mother said, oh my God, she says, uh, what have I ever done to deserve this? So, <laughs> so, so everyone I tell the story to, it's, uh, it's absolutely, uh, all they say is your mother's very humble. You're, she's very, very humble. Yeah. So, so that's her work. She's uh, been dedicated. Uh, she's, uh, she's a very humble lady. And she only tries to do the very best for everyone. Thank you, people. Thank you. And then, and then send us.
very soon, and thank you. Um, I, I think um, that uh, most certainly we uh, we need to we need to thank Canada for for their uh, for the honor that they bestowed upon my mother, because it just doesn't uh, uh, stop at my mother. It's the family. It's our community, it's the name of community, as, uh, as Chief John Wesley indicated here earlier on, that uh, Dougie says, I want you to know this is a big honor for our community too. Not, uh, not just for the family and, and your mother, but uh, we, we feel the honor that, that's been bestowed upon her. And I think it's uh, not only that, but it's uh, great for Nanaimo also. And uh, it's indicated here, I think it showed, out, uh, showed that the people who turned out here today where they, they love my mother, they respect my mother, and, uh, and she's going to be in their hearts forever. Sleep tight tonight and dream about what you saw. Yeah, but don't, don't eat too much or you'll be thinking about what you <laughs> Love you all, love you, love you for what you, your thoughts to come here and see. Yeah. And see what, what, I, what I'm, I'll be 90. Both my mother and father were politicians. And, uh, and uh, my mother was into education at a very young age uh, of working with children and uh, most certainly uh, work, working and carrying out our language and our culture. Really very important. And as you probably heard my son mention today, that's in a, that it's very important for, for uh, uh, people who are not First Nations to understand who we are and how long we've been here and that we do have a connection to this land and and that uh, we are Stanaimo, and, uh, and, and uh, Nanaimo is Nanaimo. Uh, I'm just so grateful that all our children will be able to hear about Ellen's story and learn from Ellen.